guys, today I'm going to be painting Gluttony from Limbo Eternal War. This is one of the Demon Lords and one of my favorite all-time sculpts. He is fantastic. He's got this huge open mouth. Uh, he's got no eyes on his face. He's just like actively twisting and tearing and eating people and it's just awesome. But to start out, we're going to be a little mild and just put some Mechanicus Standard Grey on the base and then go from there. I'm not really worried too much about the rim because I'm going to be holding it. This is far too big for pretty much any holder that I have. Uh, but, you know, that's okay. We're, we're going to make do. Death Guard Green is my base color for his uh, skin. However, um, it's going to change quite a bit between a wash and a highlight, and a highlight is going to be in a whole different color. Uh, he's going to be changing quite a bit from this color right now. However, this is quite thinned down. As you can see, it's not covering super well. And so I'm going to need to do a couple coats on him to get a solid color. But once he does, uh, it does end up looking a, a lot better. This is quite patchy and still quite bright. But once we, we do a, a proper base coat, it'll, it'll be good. But I will say get your big brush out. I got the monster brush here from Army Painter, and I can't imagine doing it with a smaller brush. In fact, I wish I had a little bit of a bigger brush. Now, you don't have to be too careful here. Um, I ended up being careful around the people that he's holding because I hadn't decided on the skin tones yet for all of them, but I knew some of them were going to be light skin tone. And uh, obviously then around the base as well. And so what I have now is a smaller brush. This is really just a normal brush, but for him it's small. And just kind of being a little bit more careful around the part that I've already painted and around anything I know is going to be a little bit light colored, like maybe the claws and then around the people because I hadn't decided who would be what yet. There are three people here and I wanted to, to do three different skin tones, not just to be all Captain Planet representative here or anything, but because I think it's a really good practice to try different skin tones. Not everybody's the same skin color anyway, and uh, I think it just adds to the visual diversity. Uh, he, There's so much of his skin here that it kind of dominates the whole miniature, and so uh, adding a little variation in the people I think really helps. Okay, so now we have the normal skeleton bone color out here, and this is just for all of the, uh, well, uh, skeleton bones on the base. You know, some of these base details uh, I wasn't super happy with. Some of these skulls are a little lackluster, but everything else is great. All the ribs turned out fantastic. They take a wash incredibly well. You'll see that later on. Um, but again, just being a little careful here. Uh, nothing too careful, but, you know, you just see... We're, we're going to be messing with the base, and we're going to be putting a wash, so there's there's some room for error, but best best to be safe. Now we'll have some burnt red for the inside of the mouth. This is going to be mostly covered up anyway, but even still, with anything organic, I find that layering colors and layering texture really is what helps make it seem a, a, the right color, right? A little bit more alive. And so I'm going to paint this as if I wasn't going to be covering it up for the most part, so that any parts that do show look really good still. That is kind of the idea. Now for his teeth, I wanted him, I didn't want him to have white teeth at all. Uh, this guy does not have a healthy brushing regimen. Uh, he, uh, he doesn't floss, uh, except with people's innards, and uh, those are more squishy and don't, don't really get a lot of plaque off. So buff is what I'm using for these teeth. It's kind of a, um, it's kind of a sandy yellow kind of color. Uh, but it's fairly muted. I'm going to be highlighting it up still. It's not going to be quite this bad, but this is kind of the base coat. All we're doing is base coats now, by the way. For the tongue, base coat is Grimoire Purple, and it looks super pink. <laughs> I, again, this is going to be... You're barely going to see this color at all. This color is like in the very cre very crevices of the, uh, of the, the tongue. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and just base coat it all. And again, get that smaller brush out. For the, it's kind of almost like a, a you know, tracing or something like that. Like you, you're just careful around the small parts, close by to everything, and then you get the big brush out and you just fill in the rest, and it goes a lot quicker. And as you can see again, I need multiple coats for that. Next, we actually have the horns, and I did a Gothorn brown for the horns here. I had never used this color before. This is a new color for me, and I really, really like it. I debated on whether to do really dark horns or not, and at first I was going to do super dark horns. Um, but I felt that this was probably a more natural uh, color to the horns, and I kind of I didn't want anything super drastic or anything. Additionally, I knew I was going to make one of the skin tones quite dark, and so I didn't want to uh, almost take away from that. Null oil on the base, just plop it on there. It's easy, easy going. We're doing all the washes now. This is Caribou Crimson. It's going to be over 
all of the tongue and inside of the mouth and it's going to shift the color a little bit. Um, in fact, you can use washes just to shift the color if you wanted to. But, you know, just about being pretty uh, judicious with it and allowing it just to kind of uh, be where it needs to be. Now for these bone plates and spikes, I did Ogren Camo. Again, a new color for me. And I think this was perfect for what I wanted. It's still in that green, but a little bit more yellow, a little bit more bone-like. Especially with a highlight, I think it's going to look great, but still tie in and not clash out. Additionally, for the bone plates, I wanted them to almost seem very sharp, and so I'm going to be doing a, a kind of a, a heavy, uh, a heavy highlight on them, and then I'm going to end up kind of doing that with all of the bones. You'll you'll see. Okay, so now we got Agrax Earth Shade out. It's just a pure brown wash, and we're doing that on the uh, on the, the the horns here, and we're going to be doing that a second time too later on. So a little bit more on that later. Uh, Agar throw shade on the skeletons, uh, skeleton bones as well. Uh, and as you can see, I forgot to paint the claws. I do that a lot, always with claws too. I don't know why. I have to do that off camera. Um, anyway, with this wash, um, this is how I do bones all the time. I need to try some of the uh, like the bone color for uh, contrast paints and see how that works. Okay, now we have a Thonian camo shade out for his skin. Again, this is going to take a while. And you have to be quick and you have to be careful. That's why I'm using such a big brush and I'm plopping it on there and spreading it out. Because if if you'll get tide marks if you don't. And what that means is if it dries and then you go over it a second time or go near it with the wet brush, you're gonna get a double layer on that and you're gonna see the brush stroke, the actual line of the brush. Uh, so you're gonna have to go really quick here. And uh, that's one of the reasons I like pots for my washes so I can go very quick. The pot's open, I dip it in there, I put it on the mini. Uh, because otherwise this is uh, kind of a kind of a while okay now for these teeth I did seraphim sepia it's just kind of a uh, a more orange wash or orange brown light brown wash uh, and just to kind of keep it in that yellow kind of space a little bit while uh, not just being yellow it's still kind of brown which also darkens it makes it look a little bit more dirty uh, which is exactly what I was going for Okay, now we're finally onto the first person. This is gonna be like my tanned uh, human here. So this is Barbarian Flesh. And again, you paint him really quick. Now for her, she's going to be uh, Basic Skin Tone by Vallejo, which is normally my go-to. Uh, and the reason I like this is because you can paint this as a base coat and then you can darken it or you can highlight it, or you can do both. Just depending on kind of what you want out of it. It's very much a basic skin tone, I like it. For this one, I'm actually gonna lighten it a little bit. I wanted kind of a, a, a fairly light skinned, a fairly tanned, and then an actual black skinned, like like very dark, uh, which is kind of what you're seeing now here. So this is oak brown, and then from there, I'm gonna be doing a chocolate brown, and then kind of upping that highlight even more at the very end. Uh, I, this is, I think, the third time I've done this dark skin tone, and uh, I actually really like it. I, I, I think it uh, helps pop, and it's not something uh, you see a lot of painters do for whatever reason. Maybe, I think a little bit is, is a little bit harder, especially when you're like painting with browns and stuff to make it actually seem like skin. I hope I do a good enough job on it. Okay, now we're gonna throw a flesh wash on the light-skinned uh, people, so the tanned person and then the chick up there are gonna get this nice wash. I'm gonna end up sticking my finger in that wash, but it's all right, because I'll highlight it up, you won't even know. Okay, now for her hair, I, I debated a lot on what to do with her hair. She's probably a Rose Knight from the game, and uh, for a while, I didn't know what I was going to paint the Rose Knights. I was like, do, do they all have red hair? And I thought that was maybe a little too on the nose, and it would be kind of silly, like like they only have people with red hair in their army, in their ranks. That would be silly. So I went with blonde, uh, almost as a King Kong sort of reference here, right? Uh, how he was grabbing her, uh, it just kind of reminded me of almost like the Peter Jackson uh, King Kong where you know they, they you know he likes the, the blonde chick and holds her in like in the hand like that and holds her up and she's kind of squeezed in there uh, for like half the movie and uh, I, I it just seemed like it would kind of really really pop as well and because I'm doing this red which is by the way cavalry brown it's one of my favorite browns it's 
very much a red brown. Uh, now we have kind of the red, the yellow, the orange, and the green, and all that's I think complementary or it's something like that on the color wheel. I don't know, whatever it is. It uh, it's not going to look Christmas, which is good. I didn't want it to look Christmas, but uh, I did kind of want it to go well together, and I think this went very well. Uh, this rope. Again, very easy to do, not not an, not an issue. Just some desert yellow, some Agrax Earth Shade. He does have a few bones uh, sticking through his uh, little kilt here, his little skirt. Uh, I don't know what you'd call it or what he'd accept you to call it. I went with like an almost like an ivory bone sort of white here, uh, just because I wanted them to pop out, I wanted them to look old. And now finally we're going to go ahead and put that uh, Caribou Crucem wash on here just to kind of, you know, add that texture to it and really uh, accentuate all the stuff there. Now, I've been doing all of my bases uh, like this for the bad guys. A lot of them have red, and so I wanted kind of, uh, uh, a, I don't know, a visual interest uh, in the base. So I actually add a little bit of gray-blue to the mechanic of standard gray and then dry brush it on. So you get kind of this almost uh, ethereal or uh, nighttime uh, moon glow to the rock, which I, I actually really like here. Now we're highlighting up the bones again. This is just the base color back, so it's just the skeleton bone put back onto the miniature and it works just fine. Um, a lot of people are doing lava on these bases, and I think for most of the demons I will. For him, specifically the Lord, you could do that. You could totally do lava and look great. However, with how gross he is and all the people and death all around him on his base, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Now, this highlight is hemp rope, and I love it. I love hemp rope. Not enough people, I think, use this color. It's a great greenish yellow. It looks disgusting, typically, um, but it actually does really good. I use it on my Oath Sworn painting uh, for like the jungle green kind of uh, look that it has to it. It does very good. Again, multiple, multiple coats, and I'm going to be building it up. I'm going to skip over a lot of that. You're going to see kind of the first co coat here. And and then as you build up the highlights, you're just going to, uh, you know, cover less and less and it kind of blends in. But this is going to fundamentally shift the uh, the color that he looks and make it a little bit more skin like when he's super green like this. I feel like he doesn't look very natural. Uh, it kind of works for a demon. You could totally do it. But I wanted a little bit. Uh, uh, it just needs to be a little bit lighter, I feel. And I think the this helps with it a lot and again it ties into i think everything else super well and it just highlights up super good especially on something like death guard green a very um plain muted green uh if i dare say so and i think this little bit of yellow in there helps a lot now he's fully highlighted and i'm doing the veins now you could do the veins and you can make them kind of pink kind of blue or purple or whatever um i'm just doing an extreme highlight of the hemp rope uh, because I didn't want him to look like a, a male member uh, with all the <laughs> with all the squiggly veins. Uh, it just it wasn't what I was trying to do, and I'm not trying to make that be draw the attention. I will say I love the fact that there are more veins popping out of his raised arm than the one that's down. So he's picking up somebody and holding them. That it's actually a lot more popped out than the one on his left where he's just kind of holding the dead dude. Uh, I thought that was kind of a nice touch. But anyway, I didn't want these to really take away from the, the centerpiece of the miniature, which is really that gaping maw up there. And uh, having these on his arms and legs, I think would um, more distract than actually frame it. Uh, that in it, I think it would get kind of close to the color I'm doing with the tongue, which I wasn't wanting to do either, but I wasn't wanting to do some kind of weird coloration on the well I don't know why I'm defending myself I, that, it's just what I did <laughs> I think with the contrast it looks fine okay so now we're doing a mutant hue it's an army painter paint a highlight and it is drastic and it covers quite a bit this is on purpose it's going to look ugly before it looks good this was actually all planned though sometimes this isn't planned and I fix it the same way I'm planning to do it here uh, so we'll get to that in just a moment, but really you're going to want kind of a heavy, a heavy uh, highlight here. Uh, it, I, I like the texture, I like adding a little bit of that. It should 
be well designed, uh, though probably a little bit too heavy and a little bit not natural enough of a highlight, but it's going to look good, trust me. Again, like I said, and I'm going to kind of build up to this, when you want to paint something organic or natural, the more layers of color, the more painting techniques, the more the more complexity to it I find the better. I'm always, the more if, if I just add another color, another layer, another thing on top of it, I'm always happy I did. Uh, it just makes it look a little bit more natural. So right now that is not looking great, but look at that. I have a very old dry brush that I use as kind of a, a uh, stipple and I'm going ahead and putting on some crusted sore. And this is kind of a kind of a pinkish red, a little bit darker. And as you can see, when you cover up all the tongues, uh, with that highlight still there, it looks uh, a lot, a lot better. It blends it all in together. It makes it look really, really cool, I think. And now we can really pop out those boils as well because they're gonna be brightly colored on this kind of uh, more dark speckled natural kind of tongue looking thing here. And again, these are disgusting and I'm gonna make them look even grosser, trust me. Uh, but this is actually something I didn't notice on the miniature when it was unpainted. Uh, only when I actually had the miniature and was looking at it, I was planning my painting, did I actually notice all these bumps on his tongue? Uh, they are disgusting. Okay, so now I'm adding just a little bit of a wash, and oh, there's two reasons. One, to darken a little bit, but mostly to kind of pull right at the edge there and give that little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a dark ring around it which helps I think make it look a little bit grosser. Okay, now a final highlight to actually give it some uh, uh, volume, some definition, especially farther away. I'm just taking that uh, mutant hue back and then with the stippling brush, stippling on lightly kind of the highlights to the tongue so you can kind of see the nasty texture that it all has. And uh, I, I just brighten it up a little bit anyway so it's not quite so dark but still very natural looking, or at least a lot more natural looking than I thought. And we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of dry brush or a little bit of stippling, I guess, down there just to help blend it again. Again, this is all gonna get covered up. You could probably skip a lot of this, um, but I still like to do it. Now, what you wanna do, you don't wanna use white or anything like this, but something like ivory actually works quite good here where you can actually do a little dot on these bumps as kind of like a light source and make it seem like they're they're pustules like they're filled with pus and nastiness and 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 junk and it's it's just disgusting and i i love it and again it just makes them pop almost like a like some nasty whitehead it's disgusting can't believe i'm saying these words but uh he is a demon and he is gross now we're starting to finally highlight these teeth and uh, again, I'm doing it a little heavy. I'll then end up blending it a little bit off camera just with some glazing. It's nothing too, too major there. What it is, you take this color you're doing and you water it down and then 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 finally you water it down and that'll get you a glaze. It's almost like slightly colored water and you put that over it a few times and it, uh, um, it blends quite nicely. I didn't want to do anything like wet blending on each individual tooth or something crazy like that. That'd be dumb. So uh, glazing ended up being, I think, actually pretty darn good. Okay, so now we have Steel Legion Drab for the highlights here. And uh, we're actually going to pump it up a little bit more. But this is kind of the adaptability here. So this is what I had planned to just use this. I was like, okay, well, you know what, that is, it's nice, but it just doesn't quite pop enough. You need to up the contrast if you're gonna see that from the table. So here we are with Parasite Brown. This is a, a little bit more orange in it. Uh, again, I thought that would fit with kind of the blonde hair and the teeth right above it and uh, the, the, the tanned uh, flesh toned guy down there and uh, just kind of in general, I, I thought this would pop out a little bit more and sure enough, it does. Now, this is kind of interesting. I'm kind of black lining, but with a wash. So when you have a miniature that's this well done, which this miniature is fantastically well sculpted and uh, produced, uh, it's deep enough to where you can actually just, if you have some wash on your brush, you can just touch it to the, uh, to the crevice and it'll seep into there. And so all I have to do is kind of just poke these 
and it instantly darkens them a little bit, makes them pop out, ups that contrast for me for free. It's amazing when the miniature does the work for you. I love it, it's great. Okay, now we're gonna highlight this guy back up. This is just the Barbarian Flesh again, but now uh, just starting to highlight it back up from the wash that darkened it up. We're gonna end up putting a couple layers on here, a little bit more on the outside than the inside, uh, just so it's a little bit more highlighted there. And as you can see, this brings out the muscle definition a little bit, makes them seem a bit more human. Um, and then even a little bit on the underside there, just because it's nice and sculpted, you want it to pop a little bit. Um, and he would get a little bit of light there, right? You can't have things too dark or you can't see anything. Alright, and then here is yet another one. Now this one is actually that basic skin tone, uh, but heavily watered down. I'm just going to do one layer of kind of a, a end highlight here, just to again really kind of up that contrast. And uh, uh, I, 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 I wanted him to see a little bit more dead, and I think pale skin does that a little bit, uh, but he's still quite tanned. Okay, so now we're there with the chocolate brown doing the initial highlight. One of the best things I like about this is that once I'm done highlighting, you can really tell that he's this dude's being twisted. Um, and you can see him being twisted, especially right there in the middle. And I think that's just awesome. And again, another thing I didn't notice in the gray miniature that definitely shows up once you highlight it. All right, so now I have an even higher one. This is flat earth that I'm putting on here. Again, heavily, heavily, heavily watered down. Uh, flat earth, but just a little bit just to make it look uh, uh, You know a little bit better really pop that out a little bit add the muscle definition That's kind of the hard part with dark skin is you still need to lighten it up enough to where you can tell what it is You're looking at especially at the scale Luckily uh, the miniature pretty much does everything for me, and it's all well-defined muscular And so you're just kind of putting uh, less and less in the you're just essentially just painting the middle of whatever you painted before All right, next up is finally her. We're gonna highlight her with the basic skin tone, and we're gonna end up lightening that actually a little bit as well. So this first pass with just the basic skin tone is there just to kind of make it look less messy and dirty from the wash. Uh, just kind of basically highlight most everything. Um, and then at the very end, we'll uh, do a little bit more targeted highlights. Also, you'll notice on her leg, there's like this weird wrap. It's the only part of the miniature I had a problem with. I actually ended up trimming that down, but it was not easy to get to. Okay, so now we're on the second highlight here, and as you can see, I'm covering up a little bit less, and I'm being a little bit more careful and just pointing it to kind of the outside of her versus the inside of her. So that shoulder that's exposed there on her left uh, is a little bit more, and then same with that leg. All right, now we're down to highlighting the kind of the little bone protrusions and spikes and um, all, you know just all that kind of nastiness and uh, th this is I think one of my favorite parts. So I'm gonna start out just by cleaning it up because that wash made it look a little dirty, uh, pooled in places I didn't like it. Uh, just kind of needed to make it a little bit cleaner um, and start getting towards that edge again. I wanted these to seem almost like they were sharp. Like the like even the bones coming out of him are weapons that he could or he could hurt you with. Um, not that I think I've seen anything like use it. He doesn't have a ability that uses it in the game. I just thought it'd be a cool idea. All right, now we have the final highlight, and again, this is with just more white added to it, but otherwise it's the same Ogren camo. And uh, I'm just kind of doing the tips here. Uh, this is kind of a style of bone that I've I've uh, I just ended up doing on him. So you know those horns where it goes from like a dark brown to essentially a light tan, and there's like these steps, these lines as it progresses, something similar to that. 
Um, it's also easy to do, you don't have to blend it or anything like that. Um, sometimes it can make it look a little bit cartoony, though uh, in a sense I didn't mind that too much either. Yeah, I just liked the contrast, so that was really my main goal here, was just to make those the tips of them pop like they're sharp. So same here, you can kind of think of it almost like a uh, non-metallic metal kind of idea where you're putting this like extreme highlight at the end and that helps it kind of make it seem sharp. Uh, and so you kind of have the blended part, then you have the shaded part with the wash, and then you have this kind of uh, end tip that goes to this razor sharp point. Now if you didn't want these to seem super super sharp then you could just blend it a little bit easier and you don't get quite that edge effect that I'm, I'm getting here. Alright next up we gotta highlight that rope, it's just like in the same base color but we're highlighting it back up so that it looks nice and pretty. Uh, this is actually pretty easy, you can actually get to all of it, I was worried it'd be a little kind of a an, an odd uh, angle but it wasn't at all. Alright, now to highlight the hair. This is pretty much what I always do, and uh, you know, I, I don't know if it's uh, something I should always do, but start with the Avalon Sunset, then you get this Flash Glitz Yellow, already a quite a heavy highlight, and then you're gonna go even one step beyond that, and that last step is what almost tones it down from the kind of silly yellow to something uh, more realistically blonde. So this is the uh, Dorn Yellow from Citadel. And it's essentially just has white pre-mixed in, it's an edge paint. And I actually really, really like it. I use it on blonde hair all the time. It just makes it seem, I think, a little bit more natural, a little bit more muted, not quite so, you know, Goldilocks yellow kind of thing. And, uh, and again, it just looks great, especially as like a light reflection kind of top level highlight. Okay, so now for the cloth, we have red leather out, and this is going to kind of, uh, be our our main highlight here and as you can see it it's it, it shows up which is exactly what I wanted to do and you have all these creases in it um, the texture of the cloth is actually kind of interesting and I thought about doing something with that but in the end I wasn't sure what I would do with it nor did I have a desire to actually spend that much more time on the miniature this already took about 11 hours to begin with one of my longest and uh, <laughs> I mean hopefully it shows Hopefully it, it looks good because I firmly believe that the biggest difference between what you see a whole bunch of professionals doing what you do is the time spent. They'll spend a, a whole solid week painting just one miniature and uh, if you're not doing that well then you're speeding along and you won't quite do as much. A lot of it's just time investment. All right, now I'm painting the sides already with Mechanica Standard Gray. Uh, I should have waited until the very, very end, but I was antsy and I felt I was almost done. <laughs> Joke's on me. <laughs> um, no, it, it's, it's not actually that bad. Um, actually, what is bad and what you'll notice is this is actually the air version of it. Uh, they were out of the regular version and I really needed it for this miniature and so I I bought the air version thinking, ah, that'll be just the same. It is not, it doesn't cover nearly as well, and I hated it. Okay, this is something I've never done before, so I'm actually wanting to show you the kind of the process here. This is Uhu Glue. I'll have a link to it down in the description below. Uh, this is like the go-to glue that you want to use for drool, so I've heard. Watched a video on it, a one single video on it, I felt, ah, I can do that. I struggled a lot with this, and I think a lot of it was just that me not working fast enough with it perhaps. Um, additionally, when I try to color it, uh, you should be coloring it with an ink, definitely. Coloring it with a paint thickens it up too much, but even still, as you can see, uh, it's not always stringing where I want it. This was definitely an in... Uh, part of it's just me sucking, I'm sure, but a lot of it just is, it's not the easiest thing to do. Uh, I'm sure working with a glue gun would probably be even harder. But yeah, for whatever reason, it just didn't want to always string, especially over long distances. But uh, I'm just making him drooly and disgusting and nasty. The whole point is he's gross. I want him to just be revolting. Uh, I think that's kind of how he should be with the, the mouth back, <laughs> like the way he has. I'm actually particularly proud of the back here with the, uh, or the glue or the drool in between. Um, so when I, when I actually color it, and I'm wanting it to be kind of bloody. 
Because I don't have an ink, if you don't have an ink, what I would do, and it works well, I do this later with some slime, um, is go ahead and do it clear drool like this, and then get your blood effect out and just paint the dried glue. Um, that actually works quite well. So uh, I'll talk about that towards the very end of the video, but see, here's my attempt with kind of the paint in there, and it works okay-ish. It's just, it's very hard. The paint changes it too much. I'm sure ink would be a lot better, but didn't have ink, so just went with paint, and it was definitely a trial and error thing. But what was good, though, and what I ended up doing with it is make it just seem like grimy, like Gibbs, um, like the grossest thing ever, like this right here where it's all chunky, it looks like freaking strawberry jam. That That's that's what I'm after. I, I like that. That actually ended up quite good, especially in the back of the mouth like that. Okay, so now I have my blood out and I'm just painting over it. What this means also is that it has been varnished. You do not want to do this before you matte varnish. If you do it before the matte varnish, it's going to make the glue not like glue, just kind of a red paint. Or sorry, not the, the glue, the blood. It'll make the blood, it'll dull it out and make it not seem right. Same with the drool though, I imagine as well. Either way, after you prime is when you want to do blood effects almost always. Um, in fact, I don't think I've ever done blood effects before, at least not on purpose. All right, now this is what I want to do instead of lava. Where normally I would put lava, I want pools of blood on this guy. I want it to just look like there's just blood all, all over the place here. And in fact, I'm going to have some blood draining off of the two guys down here too, into the pools of blood, uh, just, just for funsies, right? I mean, why not? So there's me adding one. I've already added one to the other one. I'm going to end up even adding a kind of a, a, another drip on the tanned skinned guy as well. All right, now we have Vomit out from Vallejo, and uh, Vomit is fantastic. Uh, in fact, the moment I found out I could buy something called Vomit, I was all for it. Uh, but again, this can look super gross, um, and it just looks great. You can add little drool lines if you want. It's, it's got a good uh, texture for that. It changes up the tongue a little bit, adds a little bit more variety. It looks gross. Um, I'm all about this. I think that just looks properly disgusting. And as you can see, you can paint the glue strand totally fine uh, with something like this. So I imagine you could do the same with blood. Now this is something I added a lot later, but I wanted to uh, varnish the tongue in a gloss coat. So this is a brush on gloss coat from Testers that I added to the tongue so that everything is matte varnished except the tongue, which has this kind of slimy gloss varnish to it. Additionally, that's how you're gonna pick up the miniature a lot, and so it may as well have some extra protection anyway, right? Well guys, it's been fun, but here is the finished miniature. Here is my version of Gluttony and all of his disgusting glory. I really hope you enjoyed watching this almost as much as I enjoyed painting him. He is a fantastic miniature. He is so incredibly well sculpted, well designed, and just generally thought out. I would have never thought of doing Gluttony like this with the kind of the bone shoots coming out and the eyeless big mouth uh, face with uh, tongues coming out of his back and it just it, uh, twisting and breaking people as he like shoves them in there and eats them uh, it's just awesome it looks great um, I, I'm so happy with them and these lords look awesome in the game if you did appreciate me putting the effort into these this video definitely took a while again it took 10 hours just to paint the darn thing and then edit it all and do the voiceover and all that be sure to like the video that always helps uh, the painting videos are a little bit more niche than some of the other stuff but I love doing it. I think it's a great celebration of miniature board games, and there's no better way to do it than painting a miniature and sharing it with you guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, if you want to see more uh, paintings or more reviews or unboxings or Kickstarter news videos or anything like that, be sure to subscribe if you have not already. If you appreciate the, all the independent things I say when I, I talk straight up, whether I like a game or not, or if you just want to help support you know, even the materials to do this or the audio that I'm recording on right now or anything like that, pausing the ad blocker, uh, Amazon link, liking, subscribing, commenting, 
Patreon, YouTube member, there's a ton of ways for you to support uh, if you so desire and can. And as always, it's hugely appreciated. You guys are all rock stars. Thank you so much. And I will talk to you guys again very, very soon.